Hey, it's Dreams in the Desert. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Are you like me? Probably not. <laughs> Boy, was that a loaded question. Do you like to tell everyone your problems? <laughs> oh, I know. It's We're asking for prayer. Really, really we are. Uh-huh. We want a prayer request. We're putting it on the prayer chain. We don't want to tell anyone else about it. <laughs> sure. Streams in the desert. Love covereth. Proverbs 10, 12. Be eager in pursuit of this love. 1 Corinthians 13, 7 to 13. Rehearse your troubles to God only. Oh, busted. <laughs> Not long ago, I read in the paper a bit of personal experience from a precious child of God, and it made such an impression upon me that I recorded it here. She wrote, I found myself one midnight, wholly sleepless as the surges of a cruel injustice swept over me. And the love which covers seemed to have crept out of my heart. Then I cried to God in agony for the power to obey his injunction. Love covers. Immediately the Spirit began to work in me, and the power brought the forgetfulness. Mentally, I dug a grave. Deliberately, I threw up the dirt until the excavation was deep. Sorrowfully, I lowered into it the thing that wounded me, and quickly I shoveled in the clods. Over the mound, I carefully laid the green sods. Then I covered it with white roses and forget-me-nots and quickly walked away. Sleep came. Sweet sleep came. The wound which had been so nearly deadly was healed without a scar and I know not today what caused my grief you know it's funny in sharing this I was dealing with a situation where two people had grievances against each other and they were airing it all over the internet and I tried to humorously say couldn't you take this someplace else private <laughs> I mean couldn't you discuss this behind closed doors please but no they had to have it all out and share it and tear it and tear it and rip it up and do all kinds of manner of things that was more embarrassing than it was you know any type of godliness and finally a sister in the Lord came along and kind of told each one you know what they should be doing in the Lord and it kind of worked for him, you know, because I tried to say, look, guys, you know, you need to have worked this out and just couldn't seem to get through to him. So she seemed to bring some godly counsel. But I remember, like, in this story, as a matter of fact, this story came up at the same time I was experiencing it. A few years back, I was in a little tiny church, and there was a, a pastor I was working for that was, quite frankly, fleshing out. You know, he'd gone off on his own little thing, and he thought nobody could see it, and nobody knew, and frankly you can't hide anything from the spirit of god he reveals everything <laughs> i mean literally everything so anyways he was fleshing out and he was driving me crazy because i would go out in the field and i was fixing up the church and i'd be working on it and so i'd go out in this field and i'd be digging away just trying to get rid of all the frustrations that i was dealing with you know talking to god and shoveling this ditch and talking to God and shoveling this ditch and yelling at God and shoveling this ditch and it was a big field. <laughs> so anyways, I read this devotional and literally put it to bed. I found a place out there in the field and I dug a grave and I buried it and then I sat down on top of it and I decided to act like a Jew and put on sackcloth and ashes and threw up dirt and was all into it and was mad and cast it down and threw this up and threw that out and threw it away and by the time I got done I felt pretty good. <laughs> From that moment on I had no issues. Sadly, <laughs> the fleshy issues sometimes of a person may come at you because you no longer have the issue. And sure enough it escalated and it all worked out in the end. But the joy I had was that in seeing God give me that devotional of burying it, I could put all my angst in it and still accomplish that which God wanted me to do. And as I passed through that time of working with this ministry, I was thrilled because when I walked away, the Lord said to me, you sin not. 
and that I had not sinned, though I had disagreed, and I had been provoked in many ways to lose my cookies and lose my cool and, you know, do the wrong thing, and yet I passed all the way through and was a witness to my wife, you know, who saw it all, and, oh, was she angry, but <laughs> saw it all, and she recognized that, you know, you don't have to defend yourself. You don't have to justify yourself. You have to, in fact, leave it all aside sometimes and bury it and leave it there so that God can move. Somebody tick you off today? Somebody really get your goat? Somebody really frustrate you? Love covers. <laughs> You've got to deal with them if they're a Christian and they're going to be there in heaven. So guess what? You might as well bury it because one way or another they're going to see it. So get it out of your system. Get over it. Go dig a grave. And let go of it. And that's the word. That's the Lord's word for both of us. I know it worked for me. It will work for you. <laughs>